a Southworth duplex boiler feed pump service. This is part one, the unboxing and initial assessment of the problems with the pump that need attention. The customer told me that the glands were blowing and he also thought that the valve timing was out. As you can see on the package, it was sent to me using the Parcel Force 24 hour service. And thankfully the parcel was in good condition. It was very well packed, it took me a while to figure it out, and at first I thought, who sent me some tins of cat food? I haven't got a cat. After slashing the box into sections, I finally managed to get at the wooden box inside the cat food box, which in turn was inside another box, very well packed. I'm quite pleased that the internal wooden box had instructions telling me which screws to undo. Remove screws on side to open. And here I'm doing just that. First of all on one side and then on the other. Once I removed the screws, I lifted off the lid assembly. And as you can see, there's something interesting inside here. I'll be reusing this box when I return the pump to the owner. Once I've completed the work that needs doing to it. And here it is. What is it? It is a Southworth Engines large duplex pump. As far as I'm aware, it's used on a miniature steam locomotive. That's why it's dirty. And in this application, its function is to pump water, probably from a tender or water tank, into the boiler to replenish it. As I'm going to run this pump, the first thing I need to do is inject some steam oil into the inlet. Why am I doing this? and why am I using steam oil? Initially I will be running this pump using compressed air and I'm using steam oil because certain other types of oil can attack the o-rings on the piston. I'm connecting the compressed air to the engine using the normal method or my method anyway. I normally use thick silicone rubber tubing held in place with a spring clip as shown here. Now I'm using some Hallett Oils bearing oil and I'm applying this to every moving part. Not only will this oil obviously lubricate the parts, it will immediately show up any leaks on the cylinder covers or the glands. It's most important to lubricate these parts, especially on a coal-fired miniature locomotive. As you can see, a lot of these parts are very black, and this black stuff is a mixture of soot and ash, which generally is not very good for bearing surfaces. As soon as I open the regulator, you can see that the valve rod glands are leaking, and upon closer inspection, particularly later on when the engine is running, you will notice that both the steam cylinder glands and the water cylinder glands are also blowing, as well as the banjo union on the steam inlet. The pump did not spring into life when I first opened the compressed air valve. Once I gave it a certain amount of pressure though, it did start to work. The first thing I do notice is that the beats are not even. It's possible by messing around with these pumps to get them to sound like a small locomotive. Have a listen, see what you think. The clunk that you've just heard, accompanied by a whirring noise, is from my silent Bambi compressor. Not as silent as I would like it to be. Not unsurprisingly, when the pump was running, some water came out of the outlet of the water cylinders. As the speed and tone of the engine changes, I'll show you why, I'm interfering with the valve events manually. Health and safety notice, I don't recommend doing this because it's quite dangerous and you can hurt yourself. Always keep your fingers well clear of moving parts on steam engines. Rhythmically, this engine is not right, it's just not evenly balanced. To alter the valve timing, I will need to release the four locking nuts. To be honest, I was puzzled as to why the settings of each valve were so radically different. Look how much of the valve rod sticks out of the nuts in the foreground. Setting the valve timing on one of these pumps is a bit of trial and error. This is important. Don't forget the water cylinders. The water that goes through the water cylinders is what lubricates the piston, but now there isn't any water, so I'm pumping some oil in there. Later on, when I've done the work on this engine and I run it on steam, I will be pumping water with it, which will wash out the oil. 
But for now, I need the water cylinders to be lubricated. I'll stop talking for a while so you can just hear the sound of the engine as I work on it. After these initial adjustments to the valve timing, I notice that the engine is no longer reluctant to start. And even though it's only pumping air, the beats sound a little bit more regular. In this clip, using a very small spanner, I'm checking the tightness of the bolts holding the cylinder covers to the cylinder at the steam end. When I place my finger over the water inlet fitting, the pump becomes even more regular in its operation and I can clearly feel the suction, that's good news. Also now because the engine is under a slight load the beats are much more even than they were. I wasn't meant to start this job until January but I have had to reschedule my workload. It's sounding better already. I'd better quickly insert a top tip time I've temporarily coiled the compressed air pipe around this Proxon mini drill bench mount. This is to prevent the pump from being dragged off the bench onto the floor should I trip up over the airline. I'd just like to say something. This pump job was scheduled for January, but I'm going to have to reschedule quite a few things, as, for instance, today I'm in the hospital for some tests, because this coming Monday I'm also in the hospital for a prostate transperineal biopsy. I've already had one, this is a more thorough one, to find out what's going on with my prostate cancer. What I'm trying to do is put the lightweight jobs in front of the heavier jobs, only temporarily, because I just will not be fit enough to move heavy objects about. I'm also continuing this series about completing a Stuart triple expansion engine which is at the stage where I have a lot of fiddly jobs to do on it, but they are not exactly physical in operation. There may actually be some gaps in the frequency of the videos for a short period, or a longer period if I die under the anaesthetic. And on that note, that is it for now. I'd like to say, as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.